guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. I want to talk to you today about some lasagna gardening. I'm getting a lot of requests as far as gaining information about that. Before I begin, I want to let you know that a lot of the information that I've gotten and that I will be sharing with you is also being shared on Real Economic Survival's page on Facebook, um, as well as if you go and watch or download the movie um, Back to Eden. Um, that is a great movie for you to watch to give you information as far as the journey of the soil and how to prep a garden and then a how-to uh, little deal at the end. So I want to make sure I give credit where credit is due. We have two different types. So we're gardening in several different styles up here. Um, if you can see me with the sun. Uh, we are gardening in several different styles. Okay, because we moved up here, um, it's been a, uh, last summer, so we've been uh, you know up here well over a year and three months or so. Uh, we were really determined um, to get a lot of gardens going fast. Um, that was our personal choice. But um, so we have done a mixture of tilling. We have done lasagna gardening. I have done container gardening. I have done raised bed gardening, and I have done pallet gardening. I'm just we're just gardening every which way we can. Um, and I really like that because it's. Um, I will tell you that that helps us compare. Um, it's giving us a lot of education, uh, and we're learning a lot as the months are rolling by and the seasons are coming back around. Um, but I wanted to dig in uh, as much as possible. Even if I do till an area, um, that was just more of a, uh, a backup plan. That is something that we do in order as a startup. Um, and we felt that it was um, because of so much land that we have and things that we do, we felt that a tiller was a wise investment for our part. But that does not take away from the whole aspect of how good and important lasagna gardening is, especially if you are gardening on a smaller scale compared to us, uh, say you're living in a neighborhood. This would be something very wise for you to do. That way you don't have to rent a tiller or go buy one. So you have to compare, you know, the living conditions as far as the landscape, where do you live, are you suburban, are you on a farm? So I'm trying to give advice from a farming perspective, yet to really advise those of you that are perhaps still living in the suburbs. Um, and maybe you just want a smaller base garden and you want something easy and, and more organic. So this is the route that I'm trying to advise. Okay. So back behind me is the garden that I was, quote, lasagna okay, as I call it. Uh, we started this um, early last fall, and I wasn't really sure how it was going to turn out. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, my theory is I've been doing a lot of, this is what I talk about in my videos is learning skills. I have read so much information and picked so many people's brains uh, that it was like, I'm just going to try this. If we fail, if it doesn't work, or if I have to add to it, then so be it. We've tried, we're learning, we're going forth. I'm not letting anything um, scare us off or hold us back when it comes to gardening, when it comes to preparing our foods, when it comes to trying uh, new um, animals or livestock. We're, we're just, I have a dive-in attitude. But this area over here, which is it's a fairly close to the home, it's a back, obviously way back far away from the woods, so I wanted to stay away from potential deer. Even though we still have deer um, up past the fencing, up closer to the house, especially with the animals that we have and, the, and our distant neighbor's animals, I figured that it was going to be a better place for a garden. Plus, it's convenient because it's near the kitchen. So what we did, this is what we did. Now, exactly what I do is not necessarily what you want to do, but it's going to be very similar. You want to think um, of natural materials in order to build your soil. You're basically making the biggest beautiful compost pile you've ever seen in your life. You're going to be using things such as hay, straw, manure, compost, grass clippings, and leaves. Those are going to be your main, uh, your, your, your thick base, if you will. Now, down here, now it looks like it's down in the ground. A year ago, we built our ground literally 18, to two, 18 inches to 2 feet thick up off the top of the ground. If you look through my Facebook page, um, I have posted pictures towards the, and you'll see my child and my oldest boy and I were rolling out bales of hay. When we got our hay, that was the first thing that we did is we actually used, um, I believe it was two. We rolled them out. Okay, we created the space that we wanted in terms of footage. Uh, and we're talking like, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think the initial garden was maybe a, I think this might be a 20 by 40, somewhere like that. 
So we created this area, and that's actually quite a good sized garden, especially for a backyard. Um, you can grow a lot of great vegetables in that size, a lot of um, beans, and you can certainly do tomatoes and cucumbers and herbs and different things, so that's a good, pretty good size. Um, we rolled out the straw. Um, I will tell you for a solid month or more, we mowed until we couldn't mow anymore, uh, of, and we collected every ounce of grass clippings that we could. Now, again, we're talking about grass that's not been treated, so you do need to consider that. When the leaves started to fall, we collected every ounce of leaves that we could. We just kept building the soil. Hay, grass clippings, um, manure, uh, you know, if we could get manure, because we knew that it was going to be sitting. Now, in terms of manure, obviously, if you want goat, is great. Uh, cow is great. Chicken is good if you're letting it compost because it is a hot manure. So it's going to be sitting all through the fall, all through the winter, all through the spring. So you should be able to have no problem using that manure. But manure is very important. So think about ways that you can get your hands on grass clippings, uh, fall leaves. Shouldn't have an issue if you live in an area with a lot of deciduous trees. Um, you can go to a farmer and maybe ask for a hay bale. Uh, I think in my area, large round hay bales, we're talking 10 bucks, guys, okay? It's not, they're not near as expensive as you think they are. Um, also, uh, so you just want to keep layering it. And you want to make it, I, in my experience, you want to make it as even as possible so that it breaks down more evenly. We found a couple of what I would call kind of hot spots, meaning I didn't quite have as many leaves there or as much, uh, you know, grass for the nitrogen, grass clippings to help break it down. Um, so that was a big lesson learned. Once you get a good layering going, evenly spread as much as possible, and it might take you a month to do that okay then you want to go to Lowe's or to a hardware store I do not have it out here because we still have it packed away and get nine mil black thick plastic okay it's not cheap I'm not gonna lie to you but it's hardy and it uh, you know you're gonna put it after you've got this all down as you want it you will put the plastic over the top of the garden so you will need to figure out again exactly the the footage that you're working with we had to put down a lot of center blocks um, on top of ours around the edges to keep it from blowing away so I do want to give you a heads up on that we live up here on in on the top of the mountain and um, it's already starting during the late spring and uh, summer we don't have too much wind but uh, I can tell that winter is coming because it's very breezy um, there are days that I'm not exaggerating you will come outside and there are gusts of wind that can be anywhere from 30 to 50 miles an hour so much that it blew part of our carport off okay so I just want to warn you that that nine mil if you are in a windy area you are certainly going to have to have that sucker weighted down because it will blow off and if you're standing on it and a gust of wind comes, it's going to blow up and it's going to take you with it. Experience 101 on that one. So long story short, pick your area um, and just build it. Layer it, layer it, layer it. Think about all the components that I talked to you about uh, and, and add it in there and put that on there. Now, when we came into spring, mine was still a little bit dry, okay? Uh, and my husband was like, I don't know, I don't know. So this is what I did. On the far end, I pulled the plastic back. It's actually down this area. I'll walk with you. It's grown up now. I'm about to pull all of these zinnias after I get the seeds from them. In this particular area, right through here, more of the edge base, um, I wasn't sure how it was going to go as far as growing. So I did buy um, some organic soil, okay? And I just... I wanted to plant spinach and lettuce and different things, uh, early, early spring crop, okay? So I just hoed into it. I just chopped with the hoe, and I just went down. It was still kind of grassy, still kind of strawy. Some of it was breaking, some it was breaking down, but this was in early March, okay? So we still had a good two months left of hot weather to help bake this compost. And I just put a little bit of soil in there. You could get it from your own, you know, I could have gotten it from the other side of the yard had I really wanted to. And my husband's like, it's going to be interesting to see how that does. So I spread my seeds. We had 
uh, butter crunch lettuce and we had spinach and we had onions. It grew like wildfire. I mean, it was amazing. Uh, and I left the rest of this covered till uh, second week of, or third week into May, it was so cold up here. And this flourished. When we finally pushed into May and I started planting all of this area with my corn and with, I had 60 tomato plants in this area. We had 80 feet of green beans. We had, I don't even know how many cucumber plants. Um, I have a video that I personally filmed of this and I didn't, I haven't posted it. I, I probably should. We got bushels and bushels and bushels of tomatoes and cucumbers and beans off of this one garden. So does the lasagna gardening work? I'm going to tell you yes. You may have to work with it uh, over through the first season. Um, as I was told, get it going, get it growing, get it baking, get it going. And I did. If I have to till the first, just kind of slightly till it in the first spring, fine. That's not ideal, but hey, now that I've got it all worked in and worked going and we've grown, see, now I'm going back my second season and we are starting to build it up. We've got tons of manure. I'm getting fresh hay bales uh, actually tonight. I don't know if you can see back there in one of my fields uh, where you've seen video of old Rick, uh, my old buddy. He's, uh, he is, um, pretty, he get, gives us our hay. He uh, cuts our fields for us and gives us our hay for free. Appalachia for you. That's what the folks are like. Um, so we are working this hardcore. So we've got manure down. We've got straw going. We are starting to put our grass clippings down. Uh, um, the leaves are going to be coming. The hay is coming. And I've got, I've got composts. So see, here it is a year later, it's going to be even better. So it does take some time, but I encourage you to do it. It does work, um, and just do everything that you can. Even if it's just a small, say, be, maybe just a 10 by 10 spot, you can easily go get the materials that you need in terms of compost, uh, grass clippings. If you need to, you know, if you need to mow your neighbor's yard, before we moved up here on the farm, I was big into grass clippings. I've talked about that before, and I have pictures of it of how well that works. I use grass clippings throughout the season. So see, this has already been, uh, I use grass clippings throughout the entire spring and summer and early fall, even when it's not lasagna. I put it in between. So I'm st continually prepping my soil all the time. If we pull something and I've got an open area, I start putting manure there uh, and letting it sit and don't use it. So we are constantly uh, now up on a farm uh, prepping soil. It's all about prepping soil. You have to keep healthy soil. So I hope this helps. I hope this gives you a little bit of a guide of what to do. I'm sure the lighting is not perfect. I'm sorry about that. Uh, we are working on editing and, and different features on cameras right now because we're doing a, starting to do a lot of videos, which is really exciting. Um, but the main thing for me is not about whether I shake the camera too much or whether I have makeup on. It's about getting you the information that you're seeking because we do need to be more self-reliant and self-sufficient and we need to help each other and that is what this page is all about so I hope this helps get started as soon as possible on that lasagna garden so you can get that nine mil down and let it bake all winter you won't be disappointed I promise and again thank you for watching be sure to subscribe on our YouTube channel and keep sending the questions we'll try to get you the information y'all take care and we'll talk to you soon